Hello, and the purpose of this video is to go over sayings number 4, 5, and 6 of the Gospel of Thomas. And uh, the Gospel of Thomas, the, the facsimile of it that I am uh, looking at, of course, is the English translation of the Gospel of Thomas Anonymous, right? English uh, translation of the Gospel of Thomas Anonymous. And it is, of course, I obtained it from, of course, earlychristianwritings.com, earlychristianwritings.com, right here, earlychristianwritings.com. Uh, so, as usual, what I am going to do is I am going to read the sayings and then I am going to pull a tarot card, two tarot cards and a, uh, and a rune, a rune, right? And just so that we're clear, I am using, first of all, the uh, Alistair Crowley's Top Tarot, which is published by A.G. Mueller. I am also using, uh, I am also using the Egyptian Tarots, which are published by Luis Caraveo, Italy. And finally, I am using also the Rune Oracle, the Runic or Oracle, which is the English edition, English edition of the Runic, Runic Oracle, called Power of the Runes, and it is published, of course, by also by A.G. Muller, right? And in the description, there will be links to where you can obtain these uh, Runic and Tarot decks, okay? So, we uh, and also I want to take the minute to introduce my copy of the, this is my most precious icon. This is uh, the San Damiano Crucifix. And it is a docetic depiction of the docetic Jesus. And how you know that is because, as you notice, in the face, Jesus is indifferent, totally indifferent to the pain that he's suffering. You can see that he, was been, he has been nailed to the cross and he feels no pain, right? He feels no pain, as you can see by the face. And the reason he feels no pain is because, according to docetism, the suffering of Jesus was an illusion. So here you go. Uh, the Santamiano Crucifix. Millions of Catholics do not know what they're worshiping when they're worshiping this icon. They actually, they're actually worshiping a docetic icon. But anyways, that doesn't matter. It is my most precious uh, icon that I have. I have a very small collection of icons, but this is the most precious of all. Um, anyhow, let's see. Let's read the first saying to see what it says. Let's see what the first saying says. And it says, Jesus said, the man old in days will not hesitate to ask a small child seven days old about the place of life and he will live for many who are first will become last and they will become one and the same right so let's see what is the de deciphering what is the meaning of this saying first of all let's pull out i'm going to pull out a rune a runic card to see what the runes have to say about this saying number four of the gospel of thomas ah oh, interesting yeah hmm wow actually no you know this rune this rune to me represents hope right they are in the storm but as you can notice one of the young women is pointing towards uh the end of the tunnel or the end of the or, or the the area of the storm where the storm is now calm you know so perhaps it indicates a journey from a place of suffering to a pr place of non-suffering that is what comes to mind when i look at this rune card um, yeah, so yeah, there you go um, In many ways the Gospel of Thomas is this because You know unenlightened we are in the storm but enlightened we go to this area over here where the storm is not present Right that she's pointing to so perhaps it is a process of going from a bad place to a better place or, a, or a, You know if you follow the, the the Gospel of Thomas, which if you decipher the sayings you will not taste death uh, but let's pull out another rune because that rune was kind of like negative or something. I don't know. I had a bad, bad vibe around that, about that rune. That maybe it meant something about me and not what I'm trying to do here. So let's see. Ah, there you go. Now this is more about, this is more talking. Yeah, look at that. Right. See? Yeah. I think this rune speaks for itself. You know? It speaks for itself. You know? The forces that uh, are being uh, handled you know when you try to decipher the gospel of thomas perhaps he is a sorcerer he's a magician he's interested in the deeper truth you know and what is hidden behind the veil you know in the power that emanates from the fire he's a cloaked and hooded spirit who lives next and the tree behind him is probably yggdrasil right so yeah okay right that's good that was a good one that was a good one okay now, now, now let's go to the tarot Let's see, what does the Alistair Crowley tarot deck have to say about this particular saying of the Gospel of Thomas? Uh, let's see. And we pull, as usual, I pull out, I, I cut the deck in three. 
right? I cut the deck in three and I pick the card that comes from the beginning. Yeah, Yggdrasil. You know, speaking of Yggdrasil, speaking of the sacred tree, here we have the tree, right? And prudence. And, you know, prudence is a recognition of a situation of radical crisis, say, liberation theologians. Uh, the Trotskyist uh, uh, militant James P. Cannon said that in a situation of radical crisis, one does not do what is realistic, one does what is necessary. So perhaps, I don't know, those are the two things that came up. Whenever the word prudence comes around, that's what I think about. So here you go, prudence. And that tree, I don't know, could it be the Yggdrasil that just came up in the runes? I don't know, I'll leave that to you. Okay, there. Uh, let's see. Let's see what the Egyptian tarot has to say. Egyptian tarot, the Egyptian tarot. Egyptian tarot here. Oh, at the bottom of the deck, there is the, the, uh, the Pope. Interesting, the Pope, right? Uh, let's see. What does the ter this tarot have to say? Uh, and I will cut the deck in three, and I will pick from the middle pile. Ah, oh, the scribe. The scribe is, is, is he's inspired. This 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 scribe is inspired. Okay, this is this is not a regular. Uh, this is not a garden variety scribe here. He's inspired by the divine, right? His writings are inspired by the divine. It is the divine dictating what he should write, really, really, or inspiring him, his creativity. So here you go. And that, of course, is the uh, ra, the Aten, the Aten, which is the original monotheistic uh, symbol, the, the original monotheistic god from the uh, emperor and from the pharaoh Akhenaten, right? So here we have him, right? Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, I need to put some of this junk away because otherwise the wind will blow it. Okay. There you go. All right. Let's see. Saying number five. Jesus said. Recognize what is in your sight, and that which is hidden from you will be complained to you. For there is nothing hidden which will not become manifest. Okay? There is nothing hidden which will not become manifest. Right? So let's see. What do the runes have to say about this? About that? Nothing hidden will... Nothing hidden... Nothing hidden... There is nothing hidden which will not become manifest. What does the rune have to say about this? Interesting. There you go. Wow. Right? This is the picture of a bliss here. You know, this is a blissful moment, you know. Yeah. The feast, uh, yeah. The feast after the harvest, perhaps. Yeah. Interesting. I love the imagery of this room. Very good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let's see, what does the Alistair Crowley Terra have to say about this room? Right, uh, let's see, middle pile. Ah, again! Yggdrasil keeps coming up. I. This is not a joke. I just shuffled the cards and everything, and look, he came back. Okay, so this is about Yggdrasil here. Uh-huh. The sacred tree. Prudence, again. Okay, there you go. Huh. So maybe four and five are related, according to the tarot? I don't know, you know? Uh, yeah. For there is nothing hidden which will not become manifest. Let's see what do the what, what do the Egyptian tarot have to say. And as usual, then I cut the deck in three and I pick the top card from the middle pile. Ah, the emperor, the pharaoh. He's in control. He's in command. You know, this is a solid situation here. You know, it came. It, it comes to my head. This is a message for somebody who's watching this now. This is a message, and the message that I have for you who is watching and you will know who you are is that you are in control of your situation totally even if you're not aware of it you are in control of your situation okay so act upon what you're thinking without hesitation don't worry do it that message just came up into my head and i communicated it i don't know i don't know who it is for but whoever is watching this that saw it is this for them the emperor right the emperor okay yeah the pharaoh right Akhenaten himself Akhenaten himself all right let's see Saying number six, his disciples questioned him and said to him, Do you want us to fast? How shall we pray? Shall we give alms? What diet shall we observe? And Jesus said, Do not tell lies and do not do what you hate. For all things are plain in the sight of heaven. For nothing hidden will not become manifest and nothing covered will remain without being uncovered. The same theme as in number five, you know. And it's interesting. Do not do what you hate. Do not do what you hate, right? If you hate something, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, okay, let's see. What does the rune have to say about this? Oh, whatever. It seems to be that Yggdrasil is a theme in this uh, in this reading. Some There is some sort of correlation between Yggdra, Yggdrasil and the Gospel of Thomas according to the rune oracle, according to the 
Alistair Crowley taught tarot. That's what this is being said here. I, that's not me. It's these cards who are saying this, interacting with this gospel. Some connection here between the meaning of Yggdrasil and the meaning of the gospel of Thomas. You know? Yeah, I don't know. But here you go. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Alistair Crowley. What does Alistair Crowley's tarot, taught tarot have to say? I cut the deck in three again. I pick from the middle pile. Ah, interesting adjustment. Adjustment. Again, this card has popped up before. Adjustment. As you can see, she has... Two hands are holding the, the sword. And the sword is the word. The truth is the sword. But there are also two balances there, right? There's a duality here. There is thesis, antithesis, but no synthesis yet, perhaps. So truth, truth has two sides to it. The thesis and the antithesis. And the only way you can have an approximation to authentic truth is through syncretism and synthesis. That's what I take from this card. That's what I say. I, I don't know. That's what came to mind that I'm saying here. So yeah, okay. Let's see. The Tarot of the Egyptians. What does the Tarot of the Egyptians have to say here? Let's see. Oh, no, excuse me. I cut the deck in three. Cut the deck in three. Saying six of the Gospel of Thomas. Interesting. Again, La Justitia. Justitia. Justice. Adjustment. The same thing. Again, some sort of balance here. You know, uh, in the Egyptian, uh, in the Egyptian uh, tradition, when a person dies, their soul... Uh, is uh, judged by Osiris, I think, and uh, Toth places their, their their heart on a on a scale against a feather, which is Maat. And if the heart is heavier than the feather, the, the the disease is devoured by a demon. But if the feather, if the light, if the heart is lighter than the feather, then the disease goes on to paradise. Right? Uh, I don't know. All that came up now. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Again, the Toth tarot and the. Uh, I pulled out Yggdrasil again from the top. Anyways, yeah, so anyhow, all right, that is, okay, that would be the exegesis for uh, sayings number four, five, and six of the Gospel of Thomas. See you on the next video. Bye.